<clears throat> Hello, hey, hi, I'm Ghosty, and welcome back. And once again, we're taking a look at a show on Disney+. Plus. This video, you already know, it is Obi-Wan Kenobi. But for this video, it is part 3. And if you haven't heard my thoughts on part 1 or 2, it should already be up on the channel, and you can go check that out anytime. But for this video, we are taking a look at part 3, so let's get into it. Previous episodes have teased a lot of stuff, so I'm looking forward to maybe specific scenes or characters showing up, and I think I'm going to really enjoy myself in this episode. I also go for this full cinematic experience. I turn my lights off, I get everything I get in the zone, and I, pay, well, I watch it. So when I do that, hopefully I'm going to get some lightsabers or two pop up on the screen and light my room up with light, but we'll see. You know what I'm getting at. You definitely know what I'm getting at. All right, I'm going to go watch it. I'll be back. And we're back. Part 3 is finished. I completed it. Watched the whole thing. And for the most part, I can say I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had an ear smiling grin. Is that the word? Is that the thing you call it? I don't know. I had a smile from ear to ear, basically, watching this. Most of it, especially. <laughs> if you've seen it and you're here, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, like, well, if you're not here, you, know, you won't be hearing this. But if you haven't seen the episode and you're hearing this, I would advise you to go watch the episode and catch up on the show and then come back and watch this video but i appreciate you you know trying to watch it anyways but regardless i'm going to talk about it anyways so this is your spoiler warning and i'm going to get into spoilers like heavy spoilers for this episode and probably the whole series overall all right we ready all right well like i said i had a smile from ear to ear from specific parts in the episode and for the most part i enjoyed it but i sadly to say I don't want to say it, but, you know, this is my thoughts, and I want to share my mind and my headspace and just share my thoughts overall on this anyways. And that's what the, what the video is about. So, I will say it. I had my issues with said things that made me happy to begin with and other things that we'll get into. But for now, let's go into, like, chronologically order in the episode from, like, where the episode starts all the way up to the end. So, that being said, the episode starts off with Kenobi and Leia in this, like, cargo hold, since they escaped from last episode, and escaped from Riva, and it immediately goes from the teaser, from the end of the last episode, into Darth Vader, which, <laughs> I, I didn't even get a chance to prepare myself, like, I sat down, and was like, alright, let's get in the zone, like I said earlier in the video, I was like, I get in the zone, so I did that, I got in the zone, I was prepared, but they fully on fledge went straight into the Vader. It showed off Vader's fortress, or Fortress Vader, I think that's what it's called. Vader's castle, in, a, in live action, which I, I was waiting for a while, which I actually am glad that they showed off, because I don't think that's actually been in live action before, and it's really cool that they show it off. And they get straight into Vader. A full suit, he talks, everything, his voice sounds great, and Hayden does a good job in this. He does a great job, I think. I'm not sure if his thing, it, like his voice is the same as... Like, I don't know if it's his actual voice or voiceover from someone else, but regardless, it's done pretty well in this episode. And Vader is exactly what he should be in this. We'll get, we'll get more into that in later. But it shows him in the cargo hold, and yeah, like I said, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> it goes straight into Vader, which I got a little nitpick about. It's very small, minor detail, but Vader's suit, the way it actually is, like, t goes together is that his mask and his headpiece, like his headgear... Is all different pieces. His mask and his big helmet piece is separate pieces, but it goes on him like as one big helmet, which I was like, I actually like noticed that. But regardless, it goes straight into Vader and straight into Vader like fortress and his castle, and then he has a hologram with Riva, which Riva isn't really in this episode much at all, really, which I kind of liked. Like I said before, Riva was a character that kind of annoyed me because, well. She just tries too hard to be evil, and she is like a. Tr she tries too hard to be an antagonist and like threatening when it doesn't really work because she's trying too hard, and that's exactly the point. So she just tries too hard, and she's like trying to be too like villainy kind of thing, and she wasn't in this mu that much. But for the stuff that she was in, it was a little better. She didn't do all that like extra stuff, and I actually did enjoy it, and I actually enjoyed her parts in this. Besides the very end thing, which was weird. We'll get into that later. But for the most part, 
I enjoyed it, and I think she got a little better in this. Or maybe because there was less of her, so we didn't see her like try her to, like try too hard or do too much. So maybe it was that. I'm not sure. But, but yeah, we get like full in an innovator, and we see him really early on, and <laughs> his presence is known. And his presence lurks throughout the entirety of the episode, and a lot of things that I cover, I talk about things like that, and a lot of villains leave these like shadows over the episode and over the project that like we're watching. So it's really cool to see it, and in Star Wars, they do it really well, especially with Vader. And his presence is felt throughout the entirety of the episode. Like, you know he's coming, you don't know when or how he's going to show up, but he's going to, and you can feel that. And it's really cool. But a little later after that, we meet uh, Kenobi and Leia after they get off the cargo hold. And they're on a planet. And they basically have to get a ride to, like, an, like a spaceport to like, get a ship and, like, leave and go back home and whatnot. And we see that. And then we get a <laughs> pretty cool sequence of... I don't know about cool, but I enjoyed it. I, <laughs> I was laughing. I was actually getting genuine, like, emotion and, like, enjoyment out of it. Of them driving and, like having this guy, like this alien dude, that is driving them, he gave them a ride to the, the spaceport to get out, I mean, he doesn't know it, obviously, and he's like a full-on, like, empire supporter, and he has, like, an empire label, like, stamped on his, like, like an empire banner on his truck, which was pretty funny, because the whole time, they're drive, driving, and they have to, like, you know, hide themselves, because he's obviously, like, a wanted man right now, and so is Leia, they're both wanted, so... They had this, like, whole sequence where they have to hide themselves. And then stormtroopers even come up. <laughs> and they're, like, face-to-face -face with this like, galaxy-wide wanted man. And they don't know it's Kenobi. And they even mess up. And they're like, oh, wait, sorry. And then they, like, tell them, like, a whole fake story. And, it, I don't know, it's just funny. It's enjoyment. It's a really, like, fun. It's a fun scene. And I liked it. <laughs> like, they're literally face-to-face -face with this galaxy-wide searched man. Like, wanted man. And they, <laughs> they're just talking to him casually. Like, they don't know it's Obi-Wan. But now, you know, I guess it makes sense. It's been a decade since anyone's actually, like, seen him in person besides those on Tatooine. So it makes sense, I guess. And, well, his hair's grown out. And I guess he goes the alias of Ben now. So I guess it makes sense. But <laughs> it's just funny. And then, like, I I'm glad they, like, get into, like... It's not really, like, smaller scale stuff. I talked about this with the last video on the last episode. Like, smaller scale stuff. And not, like, this, like, huge, like, massive scale stuff. Story-wise. But in this, we see, like, the Empire logo is, like, a feared image across the entire galaxy. And especially this planet. And it's, like, you can tell by Kenobi. It's not that, like, explored much. But it's, like, it, it makes it known. Which I like. And this whole part was just enjoyable. <laughs> it's just face-to-face. And they're just like, they don't, they don't know it's him, kind of thing. I don't know, it's, it's just funny. I had to point that out. And of course, I'm talking about the overall episode as a whole. So, of course, I'm going to talk about everything. Everything that I want to, at least. And then, a little later, once the Stone Troopers leave, Leia asks Obi-Wan if he knew her, like, mother. And it is the most heart-wrenching thing. Like, because from a viewer standpoint, obviously, we all know what happened. And we know what had, what had happened before. But just seeing Leia's, like, innocent, like, young face ask him this, and he, like, looks down with such, like, grief and despair. Uh, I don't know. Ewan McGregor is such a good actor, and I think he really does shine as Obi-Wan. I mean, even Leia. The child actor for her, the actress is pretty good. And not only is it sad just because she doesn't have her mother, but we all know what happened with Obi-Wan and Anakin and Padme and everything in Revenge of the Sith. And... Her just asking him, and then him looking with that, like, look on his face. It's just sad. It's just upsetting. Oh, man. Obi-Wan deals with so much grief and so much, like, sadness with this. And this entire show so far. And just blames everything on himself. And everything that has happened. And, like, the timeline of events that, like, led to Anakin's downfall. He blames himself for everything. And there's so much grief and, like, misery. He torments himself over it. And it seems like he's been doing it for the last 10 years. And it's just emotional. It's just sad. It's upsetting. That's what I've been saying. But this this like part really, like actually got to me. Because not only does he say... like Not only does she ask him if he knew her. But she only asked him that. Because he said that... like When he looks at Leia. He sees like her mother. Which is even, which is even worse. Because not only does she ask that later. But just you could tell like what he's looking at her. 
and he's just like so many thoughts are probably running through his head and it just oh man everything that happened and oh man it's a roller coaster of emotions especially for Kenobi and then like little after that after that part's done they have to get past this like fence or this like gate and it's like energy kind of it's like pure light like lightsabers are and they have to get by it and like they're like open one trying to like fight the stormtroopers off you've seen it you know how it goes but the thing I'm talking about is number one he didn't even have to do that dude like that the guy that drive that drove them but I understand why but second of all a stormtrooper gets like full on like cut in half <laughs> which I wasn't expecting I was like damn and just sitting there like in awe I was like damn they really did that obviously it's Star Wars and there's no blood but there actually is a reason cause that there is no blood, which I like. But it, so it makes sense and all. But like, it, it still happened. He got caught in half. I was like, God damn. But it, it was pretty damn cool. And then after that, we get a scene with the Inquisitors or third sister and the fifth brother. I think his name. I think his name is. I think his name is. Yeah, I think. Yeah, th I think it is. Fifth brother and Reva. And I know I, I've been saying I don't like them that much, or that they, they don't. I don't. It's not like that I don't like them. I don't dislike them or anything. Just, they haven't been, I haven't been sold on them. But now that it's more of Reva's motives and what she's doing and why she's so, like, bloodthirsty for Obi-Wan Kenobi, I, I like that more. I like her aspect. I still think sh she seems too, like, like, try too hard kind of thing. Like, she's trying to be too evil, like I said. And the fifth brother's fine. He His voice is kind of, <laughs> like, irritating a little bit. Or just because, not even irritating, it's just not understandable. Like, how I am sometimes. He's just, like, not clear most of the time, I feel like. But most of the stuff, at least, some stuff, maybe has the stuff. Alright, not everything, <laughs> but some stuff is just, like, not understandable. And you kind of, like, you need to think about it, what he said, to actually understand it. But I think it just helped them out. Plus, they're not in it for that long in this episode. They're not, they don't have that much screen time, so that could help with it. I'm not sure. But, yeah, that, that's that scene. And then we see the holograms of Vader and, like, what Vader wants. And then, of course, Obi-Wan and Leia get through the gate I was talking about, and they're hiding out in this town. And obviously, the Empire is, like, filling up this place, and they know that we have this, like, search for Obi-Wan. And the Fifth Brother's there, the Reva's there, oh, everyone's there, they're, like, a lot of stormtroopers and such, officers, specialists, whatever you want to call them. They're all there. A bunch of, like, Empire, like, officials and Empire, like, members are there. And then we, we even see someone else from... I'm guessing left over from the Republic, maybe. I I'm not sure. Is a girl named Tyler? Or maybe it's like a rebel, like a rebellion kind of thing. Not like rebellion, like original trilogy kind of thing. Just people that are going against the Empire, like in this stage. But she's there and she actually helps Obi-Wan escape. Or try to at least. You've seen it. You know how it plans out. And they try to help Obi-Wan and Leia. But then Reva finds out later on and, you know, we see a little bit of her. But... There is one more character that comes in, looking for Obi-Wan, and it's probably the man who wants him most. But before we get into that, sorry to push it back even further, but I wanted to mention the pathway under, or in the secret passage is that it seemed like it belonged to a Jedi, which it does, obviously. There was the symbols, everything on the walls that Reva noticed, and it made sure that we knew it was clear of that. And of course, Talos straight up tells Kenobi, who it was. And she talks about a character that we actually already know. About said Jedi being Quinlan Voss, which was a Jedi during the Clone Wars and is in the Clone Wars series. So that's pretty damn cool and we get to see him, maybe. But the whole idea of secret tunnels led by the Jedi and what is left of the Re Republic staying and keeping it very secret and these tunnels and like travel and paths so people can smuggle younglings and children and just anyone to get out of harm's way of the empire is a really cool concept and i like it a lot and it really shows and like and it shows you instead of telling you that the jedi and the what's left of the republic is helping in any possible way that they can and they're is, they're still keeping that dim of light that is hope that they have alive but now i think we can talk about the revenge after revenge of the sith and we can talk about the man the myth the actual legitimate legend himself the moment you've all been waiting for. And that... <laughs> oh, baby. The remaining of this video is going to be all about him. The Dark Lord himself. Darth Vader. And my god. 
I love how he is portrayed in this. He is by far one of the best villains, if not the best villain ever. And my god, how they portray him in this show so far, and how he is in this show, is brilliant. Let me talk <laughs> about this. I know I said I had my issues, which we'll get into, but my god. Darth Vader is one of the most powerful beings in the Star Wars universe, and just in like fiction, basically. And he is very powerful, and obviously a big bad villain. And in, in this show, he is... Not only do we see Kenobi's perspective, which is really emotional, and again, like he's like tormenting himself about everything that had happened, and he's dealing with a lot of grief. So we see a lot of emotion and a lot of fear from Kenobi, which is really good. I really like that aspect a lot. But overall, just in general, Vader so far in this, he is feared. He's a force to be reckoned with, and like that was, that's what he is. This, the name itself of Darth Vader, or Vader alone, is feared. And in this, he is Dark Lord. He is respected by all the Empire. No one dares to go near him, step foot near him, or anything. Talk to him whatsoever, unless it's strictly about business or what Vader wants. And in this, he is bloodthirsty, he is merciless, and he is justifiably, like, a big source of fear. Like, everyone is right to fear him. And I love how he's portrayed. Like, this... Like, actual Dark Lord that's feared by everyone that is unstoppable. Like, I understand perfectly why everyone fears him. <laughs> and this, does, this episode alone does a great job at showing it. He is an immovable object. He is more than just a man. It's kind of unnerving how, like, it seems that he's so unhuman. I mean, literally, I guess he is, actually has, like, druid and robotic parts and such. But still, he is a man. And he was a man before as well. But now he's turned to the dark side and it seems like he's not human. And that's how people look at him. And <laughs> respectfully, I agree. And I just love how like merciless he is and how evil it is. And oh my god. It cut, they do the same thing in Jedi Fallen Order. I didn't play much of the game myself, but I know the ending. And holy shit, that is like the perfect Vader portrayal. And they're doing the same thing in this and I love it so much. This is probably peak Vader, because he's not getting old as of yet. Like in this, he's like been Vader for a decade now, and he's probably in his like prime right now, where we're at in this show. So, obviously, he's not messing around. And also, another very minor thing, Vader's design, his cape connects with a chain, just ab like below his helmet, and a lot of like versions with him and iterations cover the chain with a mask for some reason, and then in this they don't, which I really like. Because it's just a really cool design. Such a small thing, but it does a lot for his like outfit and his design, which is pretty cool. And they have it in this. And yeah, I'm not going to keep repeating myself, but Vader is just like... Whew. Just like Jedi Fallen Order, just like the last final like final scene of Rogue One, he is just this... Something out of like a horror film. Like, he's very like intimidating, very menacing, scary, evil. And there's no chance of escape or going against him. Unless, of course, down the line, you're his, like, biological son or something like that, maybe. But, like, there's no <laughs> chance of escaping. There's no chance of running. And he's just, no matter what, he's his unstoppable force that's, like, pure evil and just pure darkness. And I love it so much. Like, just, I live for this unimaginably, like, terrifying and powerful, unmerciful Vader so much. And I love it. And it's so good to see it where, like, again, especially in this show against Kenobi of all things yes I do have problems with it which I'm going to get to because it happens later on and yes it does kind of diminish the fact of like um, scenes in like New Hope a lot of things do like Leia never meets Ben Kenobi but in New Hope like you know we you know what happens but then in this also like it kind of diminishes in a New Hope when Vader and Kenobi meet again it's like been all them years and all them all that time since like they first like, had that battle, so it does kind of diminish it a little bit, but I, I don't really mind that much, because what we're getting is really cool, and I like it a lot. I've been enjoying it. And then we even get more of, like, the girl that's helping Kenobi, Tala, I think her name was. We have that droid that's, like, ready for all the smoke. He grabs a hammer, which I talked to a friend, Diary. He's been in the videos before. Shout out to him. You might be watching this right now, but hello. He said that it could be a Bad Batch character. I think his name was Wrecker. I didn't really watch that either, 
but he has a theory about how it might be Wrecker because he hides in the drone beforehand. So it could be him helping out and hiding out, going against the Empire, which would also be pretty cool. Not sure if we're going to see it, but I wouldn't be surprised because all these Disney Plus like live action Star Wars shows are bringing back or bringing animated characters to reality and bringing it to live action. So it could actually definitely be like plausible. We'll see. But yeah, like I said, Vader is his unstoppable force and like literally the force. The strongest connection to it and he's like really powerful. He just is unimaginably powerful and fearful like villain. And he's going through his village. Literally, he's not finding Kenobi and he's not sure where to look right now Like as he's like going through the village. But he doesn't give a shit. He's killing random civilians and choking people out and just ending their lives just for the hell of it. Just because he is mad and he wants to do it. That's all. They're not doing <laughs> nothing whatsoever to him. They're standing by letting him pass. Letting the Empire do what they gotta do. And he's still killing them. And <laughs> oh my god. I thought Reva was gonna come in after him and kill like people who he didn't kill. Which I would've been really pissed about. Because it's pretty like really only cool if it's Vader. Not gonna lie. But they didn't do that, so I'm glad they went in that direction and didn't have her do that. But, Jesus, Vader, man. Whew. But yeah, as everything's going onwards and everything's like going forwards, we see Vader find Kenobi, and of course we see a really <laughs> cool-ass fight. It's so cool. When he first meets him, it's a really good and powerful, like meaningful dialogue, which I admire so much. When they do th- like one-liners conversations, whatever it is, when it has meaning and it's so powerful and really impactful, I adore it so much. Obi-Wan asks him, like, what have you become? And Vader responds with the words, are you ready? You are what you made me. Which, I could not stop smiling. But also, like, just taking it all in and seeing these two, like, come face to face again is so, (laughs) it means so much and I love it. Like I said at the beginning of the series, like could it could have been not good at all. I still would have loved it for the moments, but uh, I think it's pretty damn good so far, and I've, I've been enjoying all of it, or for the most part at least, because some things are a little, little nitpicky here and there, or like Reva or stuff like that kind of thing that I point out. But we see them fight, and that beautiful dialogue. And at first, I thought Vader, he's had some time to cool off, but obviously he's still really bloodthirsty for Kenobi. So I thought he was going to be having like really powerful and mad swings at him and I didn't think he was going to hold back whatsoever and I kind of like thought back to myself and was thinking about it and he's not really trying to kill him I th- obviously I think they're going to come back and meet face to face and fight again some point down the line because we see at the end of the episode Reva takes Leia or whatever happens at the end and Obi-Wan's defeated so we learned that but in this Vader isn't trying to kill him obviously he's pissed he's beyond mad and he's taking his like anger out on Kenobi. After, from, after all that time, he's waited. He's finally face-to-face with him, and he's taking it out on him. Which is obviously what we've been waiting for. And we get this really cool fight scene. I love... Again, I, I adore it. But we get this cool-ass fight scene, which some moments I feel a little awkward. Like, Kenobi kind of like looks at him, turns to the side, and runs away. Or, like, runs to the side. But then a second later, he's like in the same place, like looking around. So I don't know why he went... Uh, I'm not sure. Some things seem a little awkward here and there. And just some shots. But for the most part, like 90% of it, 95, 99% if you even want to say that, it's awesome. And the whole time, it's really... It's like a masterpiece. And I love seeing it. But yeah, I don't think Vader is trying to kill him. Obviously, he's trying to harm him and bring pain to him as much as he can. But he is just toying with Kenobi. He knows... He Like he says... The years have made him weak, and he hasn't been in connection with the Force. And he hasn't lived as a Jedi. He's lived as this, like, smuggler and scavenger on Tatooine. Obviously, Vader doesn't know that, but he knows that he could feel that connect- the connection of Kenobi and the Force isn't strong. And he knows that um, like, Kenobi has gotten weak, and he hasn't had much experience recently, or at least in the last decade. So, he just toys with Kenobi, and he easily defeats him. Kenobi can't really stop, like, Vader at all. Vader comes at him full on swinging and another thing to really appreciate when it comes to this fight and this sequence that we got between obi-wan and vader face to face is that it's not only vader is not trying to kill obi-wan in this like i said he's not like he's obviously trying to harm him but vader this is like personal everything between obi-wan and vader after revenge of the sith or anything along that timeline is always personal especially this you could feel it it gives it off pretty well and you could definitely like i said you could definitely feel it 
And Vader is making Kenobi suffer. He's giving him the same treatment that happened to him. Because of what happened on Mustafar in Revenge of the Sith and what happened with them previously. Because again, before this, last time they saw each other was what happened in Revenge of the Sith. So he's doing what Obi-Wan did to him and making him basically burn alive. And he's making him suffer. As well as just outdoing him in every aspect in this fight. You could tell Vader's gotten a lot stronger and Kenobi's gotten weaker. And Vader is full on displaying that just in front of Kenobi's eyes. And he's really showing it off. And again, he's not like really trying to kill him. He's toying with him and just wanting to make him suffer. Like he did back then. But obviously after that, Vader's going to want more. So maybe we'll see them come face to face again. Who knows? But like I said, I thought he was going to be even more mad. But now that I've actually like thought of it and realized that he's just toying with him and not trying to kill him, then it's fine and I understand it. Maybe we'll get an even cool fight later in the show. We'll have to see when it comes out. I hope so. Which is full on, like, face to face, like, full on, fully fledged fight. Like, I want to see them, the experts that they are with the Force and, and their lightsabers, I want to see it come to life. And I want to see that scene. Like, an even better fight scene than this. And I love this one. I really did. So, it's saying a lot. But they, I, they could do even more. They could, like, amaze me. This, this scene amazed me to begin with. But they could do even much more, and we don't even know what they have in store. We got to see when if they actually end up doing it. And it's a really like cinematic experience sort of thing in this episode because, oh, it's just so well done, I think. Because the lightsabers are going, they're going at it. And uh, the whole time, they, they have this like actual meaningful dialogue. No like little stuff. It means so much to both of them. Which, and it holds a lot of impact. And it, I think it's done really well. And obviously, I've been seeing a lot of people saying it's underwhelming. And at first, I thought maybe a little bit. But obviously, they're going to meet again. And that's not only it. We got their first reaction and first face-to-face -face, like experience with each other. So I think they're going to come back again and maybe do even more. There's still three parts of it. I didn't even think Vader was going to come in this early. I honestly thought they were going to build him up until the end. But here he is, incarnate and in the flesh and machinery. And we have the lightsaber sounds, obviously, with Darth Vader's like mechanical breathing, the entire scene. And it's... Oh my god. But like I said, I've been seeing a lot of people say it's underwhelming. And I thought it at first, but after actually taking it in and realizing and actually like acknowledging what was going on, I appreciate it and love it so much more. And I'm actually glad they didn't go on like full-fledged like prequel kind of fight with this. Because this is Vader just taunting Obi-Wan. Physically, mentally, emotionally, he's taunting Obi-Wan and he's making him suffer, like I said. And again, I'm glad they went this direction because they're probably going to fight again or come face to face once again later in the show. Don't know when. Hopefully soon. Like I said, I want to see Vader more, obviously. And of course, we're going to see more Kenobi. He's the main character. And this fight is just full-on trauma. It's an emo it's emotional and it's meaningful. And that's all it should be. It doesn't have to be that big, flashy kind of fight like we had in Revenge of the Sith. Maybe they'll get to it, like I said. But this is just full-on trauma and then face to face and it's an emotional it's meaningful and like i said it's impactful so it feels much more raw than them ha like even if they wanted like i feel like they want to do f kind of fan servicey things and people want that fight and i think we're, we're gonna get that later on and i think regardless of if we get that fight or not i think they're still gonna fight regardless even if it's not that big flashy fight like what we got in revenge of the sith and what they said it was going to be like like the prequels I think we're going to get a fight regardless, but I'm kind of glad that this wasn't it, and it wasn't this early on. And I'm glad this was more raw, and this was more emotional, and more with the connection of these two characters, rather than just some big, like, flashy fight, if you know what I mean. And I really do think it's brilliant. I, I actually, like, after thinking about it, I really like how this fight is handled. Again, some little errors or nitpicks, but for the most part, I really enjoy it. And I love it. I'm probably going to rewatch it a lot. And rewatch it, the same scenes over and over again. Besides probably the stuff in between with Reva. Because every time they would go to Reva, I would be like, Go back to Kenobi, go back to Kenobi, go back to Vader, now please. Like, I want to see more of it. And they did that, thankfully. So we didn't, we never did get like too much away from them. And that was still the main focus, thankfully. But of course it had to keep a push in with Leia. And then like I said, it was like a cinematic masterpiece. We have Vader's voice, or, yeah, his voice, but also his breathing going along, and the lightsabers being the only lights, and it illuminates everything around them, along with the fire, which we get uh, multiple good shots of Vader 
with the flames reflecting off his helmet and his eyes, which is really sick to see. But my god, man, this moment and this show entirely, oh, obviously it's good as a as like a show in general. It's a great episode, and it's even better as a Star Wars show and an even better Star Wars episode. If that makes sense. And yeah, like I said, I think it's done really well. And just seeing them fight, and the location though is a little underwhelming. I'm not sure where the other fight. That's why I hope they do come back with another fight because this was a really cool interaction. But then again, it'll be underwhelming if they like are like they don't fight again and they don't show up again to get like face to face. I hope that we see more Vader. I think we're gonna see more Vader and obviously more Kenobi no matter what. I'm just hoping we we can see another fight. And though, I wish Vader had his own show so much, <laughs> so bad. And well, yeah, like they he uses gravel as like a I don't know. It's a little some things are a little underwhelming and some things might have been better but I get the story standpoint and Kenobi had to go away and like or he had to get away and like escape somehow and like Vader tells the stormtroopers to bring him t towards him like bring him to him and they don't or they or when Vader could have just like put the fire out or he could have like brought Kenobi to him or went over and what got Kenobi but Kenobi ends up getting away like really quickly so I'm not sure but it's all right I, and I really enjoyed it for the most part like I said I lo I'm loving the scene and I loved it and then speaking of the fire, Vader uses like gravel, whatever, which is also a little odd. But at the same time, it was more than gravel, which I liked. Like at first, I was like gravel, like I wasn't sure why he was doing it, but it was like flammable or something like that. And he lights it up with his lightsaber, which is pretty cool. I actually like that they're using the physics of the lightsaber and they're actually showing it off, which is pretty neat. But he sets it on fire and uses the force to burn Obi Wan Kenobi and push him into the fire. And basically, like, give him the treatment that Obi-Wan gave him. And burning him alive. Which was really cool. And he tormented Obi-Wan. Which was really badass to see. I liked that a lot. Like, again, I was watching it. I was like, mm hmm like, I wasn't trying to think about it. But, like, watching it and realizing why he was doing it was pretty damn cool. And just thinking about it afterwards. And after watching it, it made it better. I will say that. Now that I'm thinking of stuff and actually talking about it. When I actually acknowledge what's going on and realize what's going on. And I actually, like understand it it everything it makes everything so much better and like i said already like i actually like how it plans out just some nitpicks here and there and that's all that's why okay i i have been praising it enough so and it is a, th a thoughts video so i do have to share maybe some minor nitpicks here and there so that's why i'm talking how i am in some moments vader is kind of just standing there like watching obi-wan get up or like he's just watching him escape which i thought he was going to do something about it and obviously we see that he did escape and Vader doesn't really do anything. He just stands there. <laughs> he just stands there. Menacingly. <laughs> but uh, that's what he does. Vader is a character that he can get away with doing that. And do nothing. It depends on what he wants. And maybe he does not He does want to do that. And just let Kenobi get away. So they can find each other again somewhere else. Not sure why. But again, I think that they need to meet each other face to face again. And also, now that the Empire has Leia. If they do have Leia. Because next episode we could get one of them really weird chase scenes again not sure that'd be even weirder because it's one tunnel and Revo is the only person chasing her that'd be even <laughs> weirder hope not but I don't know I doubt it but we need Leia to make sure they don't come across with Vader like she can't see Vader Vader can't know about Leia yet it's a it's a thing by itself that they're doing with Vader and Kenobi because they're supposed to meet at Revenge of the Sith after all that time in A New Hope but they're doing it in the show and this is canon so, I don't, but I don't really mind it again. So, we got to see how that plans out. But Leia could not go with the Empire at all. we got to see next episode. But I think that pretty much covers pretty much everything. Like I said, there's some nitpicky stuff I have about the fight. But for the most part, like 99% of it, whatever it is, I loved it. And I thought it was really well done. Some stuff seems a little underwhelming. And some things are a little, like, odd. But again, like I just said, like for the most part, I enjoyed it. I loved it. And I think it was done really well. And I really want to see more of it. <laughs> I can't... I really want to see more of it. But I think that pretty much covers the episode. And my thoughts to be exact. And pretty much everything. I loved it. I can't wait to see more of it. I'm obviously going to be back for the next episode. And make a video on it. So I'll talk to you then. Thank you for watching this video. It's longer than I thought. Uh, or longer than I wanted it to be at first. Because, well, Darth Vader is here. you got to make an exception sometimes. So that, that's exactly what I'm doing. And so did you for watching this video. Because, well, the video's runtime is a good amount of time. 
and it's longer, like I said, than I wanted it to be, or than I thought it was going to be. But again, it, the beta is here, so there's a lot to talk about, so obviously. And stuff that I want to get into detail about, but you heard it anyways, especially if you're still here, you made it to the end of the video, and you made it pretty far. So I applaud you for that. Thank you very much. I appreciate you showing it up and actually watching me and hearing me out. Thank you again. I appreciate it greatly. And well, again, that's the end of the video. Subscribe, like, comment, etc., etc., all that common YouTube stuff. And share, if you can, please, with your friends, with your mom, with whoever. doesn't really matter. Maybe if you even have a friend that's like a brother to you that you had to fight in battle, and now he's half man, half machine. I don't know. But anyways, share, please. It does a lot more than I thought it did. So, that's all. Thank you for watching this video. This has been Ghosty, and I bid you all farewell.